back by popular demand, I do invite you to join me in Cooking with the King. that some days since I did advise you that whilst I'm here in safety and isolation, uh, my man-cook, a plain man-cook of good standing, has gone into self-isolation. The situation is further exacerbated by the fact that the wagoner has not been here this last several days, and thus I, your king, has resorted to searching about in the pantry for all manner of food items. It will distress you to learn that all I've been able to find thus far are vegetables. Indeed, the recipe, the receipt I have been left is for a vegetable pottage. Now, you'll be fully aware of my views as to vegetables that which does grow below the ground is indeed common food for common men. But these are most difficult times. We are in great straits. Armed with the receipt for a vegetable pottage, you see before you all the necessary ingredients. In truth, Whatever the season of the year, you may use whatever vegetables you have to hand. Thus here, you do see onions, we have leeks, we have parsnips, we have carrots, we have a quantity of spinach, and here, herbs from the garden. I, I was in some difficulty, for I did know of the kitchen garden, but I did not know where it was, and thus... I did venture forth and did find of the kitchen garden. Then there was a further problem, for I do know of rosemary and thyme and parsley by name and flavour, but I do not know them by plant. Thus, I did resort to... Mm, by taste and by smell, I did harvest rosemary, thyme and parsley. We also have a quantity of oats. Now, if you are to make a pottage with the appearance of being a soup, then uh, two to three tablespoons of oats will be quite sufficient. If, however, you do wish to make a thicker pottage that has the appearance of a fermenti, then you may need twice or even more than twice to make that said pottage. I think that this will be the first time ever your king has eaten oats. For in truth, oats is what we feed horses with. Hmm. We have two ounces of butter, and then we have one and a half pints of vegetable stock. Here, we have that modern contrivance called a stock cube. These are very much like dice other than they have no dots. Previously, I did crumble two stock cubes into one and a half pints of water. This will be used later. And finally, we have ground pepper and salt for seasoning to taste. And now, my loyal subjects, it is time for the preparation. First, it is the onion. So taking the onion and with a sharp knife we take off the top, we take off the bottom like so, then I prefer to cut down to the first layer of skin, I do skin the onion like so and making sure that none of the debris, the rubbish, the cast off skins 
make sure you have a suitable pot to get rid of the rubbish. Then I do cut the onion in half and taking it half into slices like so. Thence half again. Similarly cutting into slices and half again taking all you've cut and placing in a nearby bowl like so. Having peeled and roughly chopped two onions we now turn to the parsnips. These are topped and tailed like so. Again remembering to remove the rubbish and then with a sharp knife and being careful not to cut oneself we start to peel the parsnip. Having peeled the parsnips as you see I can point out here of course that in some receipts it will say you may leave the skin on. I must admit the idea of eating parsnip skin is almost abhorrent as eating of vegetables. But in any event I will cut the parsnips into rough pieces like so. Having uh, prepared the parsnips we now turn our attention to the carrots. Of course the carrots like all of our vegetables have been properly washed. And in this instance as with the parsnips I do top and tail like so removing of the rubbish and then looking at the skin of the carrot I think it is quite acceptable even for your king to eat the carrot with the skin. And so I will now cut into rough chunks as you do observe again reducing like so placing them in with the parsnips in this instance we are preparing three carrots. Having completed the preparation of our carrots I now turn my attention to the leeks. Now this leek was pulled only this morning we have reduced it by taking away the dirty root, the outer skins and the great profusion of upper leaves. Now with the leek which has been thus washed I do remove the base I do remove the top of the leek where it has become somewhat calloused over since cutting and then with a sharp knife I cut the leek into rings not too wide because in a short while when we do begin the cooking process we will sweat the leeks as we do in indeed sweat the onions with butter. I'm particularly fond of leeks. The leek is indeed a vegetable associated with Wales and as you will be aware Wales is the land of my fathers. Now having prepared all of our vegetables we will proceed to the hearth to begin cooking. However before doing so we do ensure that all of the peelings are taken out and given to the pigs for even in these difficult times nothing is wasted. Welcome to the oldie hearth where firstly we do warm our pot and when it is of sufficient temperature we do take our butter like so we empty the butter into the pot and then the pot being heated we allow the butter to melt moving it about we do not want it to burn when the butter has fully melted we then place in our onions agitating them as you see to make sure they are fully coated with the butter then we do allow the onions to sweat. Having sweat the onions we now add the leeks. Making sure that they too are sufficiently agitated to be covered with the butter and mixed in with the onions. We then allow them as with the onions to sweat in the butter. When the leeks have been sweated together with the onions and have taken in the flavour of the butter we then add our carrots 
and our parsnips. We then stir together, making sure that everything is fully mixed together and that the carrots and the parsnips are coated with the butter as with the leeks and the onions. We stir it about so they take on the flavour of each other and when everything is sufficiently mixed and all is coated with the butter I bring forth the stock. Remember the stock comprised of those modern things called stock cubes. There are two stock cubes here mixed with one and a half pints of water. Having made sure it is thoroughly mixed I then slowly pour in the stock. You notice it goes off the boil. All of the stock like so. Then again everything is mixed together and these to log mark easily four or five you raise the heat like so to allow everything to come gently to the simmer. When our mixture has started to boil as you can clearly see turn the log down and so the mixture reaches the point where it is at a simmer. Then we add our herbs. Here two to three tablespoons of parsley mixed in closely followed by approximately a tablespoon of rosemary and a tablespoon of pulled thyme into the mixture like so. Again all is thoroughly mixed in and finally before we leave our pottage to simmer we add our seasoning. We have ground pepper and salt which we add to flavour like so. Then making sure that our pottage is thoroughly stirred and mixed together. We then leave, leave it to simmer, looking every so often until we reach that point when the vegetables have become soft. When the mixture, our pottage, has been simmering for an appreciable time, check to see if the root vegetables are soft by using a sharp knife. If the vegetables are soft, as you observe here, then it is time to add our next ingredient. Now depending upon the season, you may add whatever green leafed vegetable you have to hand, cabbage or such like. On this occasion I have spinach. I do place the spinach like so and then I do stir the spinach about it being a soft leafed vegetable it will quickly disappear into the mixture of our pottage. It will indeed wilt when it is all fully immersed in our mixture we do leave our pottage to continue its simmering. When the spinach has wilted or indeed when the cabbage has wilted depending on what you have used then you may add two to three tablespoons of oats. Now if you want your pottage to be thicker then you may add as much a quantity of oats as befits your requirements. The more oats you add the thicker the pottage will become. A thick pottage is called 
for Monty. And there the oats are mixed into our pottage and then we leave the entire mixture to simmer to ensure that the oats are thoroughly cooked through. And there you have it my loyal subjects, a splendid vegetable pottage. When the oats are cooked through and when all the vegetables are nice and soft, then you may serve and of course then re-season to your own taste. Now I, I'm going to take a portion of this to try it. Surprisingly good. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. But no, no, eating of vegetables alone, peasant food is beneath the dignity of your king. I cannot survive on vegetables alone. Take this away, take it, take it to the nearest food bank for those peasants who are in greater need than I. But fear not, my loyal subjects. Your king has made appropriate provision for this very morn, one of the boys did find this dead in the road. Ha ha ha, ha ha, goodly flesh. <laughs> Thank you for watching my video. If you have not already subscribed, then please subscribe below and click the bell if you wish to be advised of new videos. And please don't forget to like this video and to leave a comment below.